All right, we've been studying uh, the, you know, the theology of the book of First Peter, and in there is this this theme of of exile and homeland, um, and I think here in in First Peter chapter one, it seems to me to be sort of his thesis statement or the grounds for everything he's about to say in verses three to nine. This idea that through Christ we have an inheritance waiting for us that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for us, who, who God is keeping to bring us to that point. Um, and yet until we get there, we're going to go through trials, trials that test our faith and refine us and bring glory to God, um, but that we will get there. It, you know, so it's this idea that <clears throat> That our home is not yet here, that in the meantime we're exiles, like, you know, Israel in the wilderness, having left Egypt on their way to the promised land, but for that 40 years they wandered around in the wilderness. And then in 1 Peter 2, um, especially verse 11, he says, I urge you then, beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your souls. This... This theme of being exiles or being people who are waiting, looking for their true home isn't just in 1 Peter either. I feel like we find it all over the place. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says that your citizenship is in heaven. Um, Colossians 3 2 talks then about setting our mind on things that are above. Hebrews, um, well gosh, 11 is talking all about people who you know, by faith, we're looking for the fulfillment of a promise that is yet to come, that they died in faith, still still looking for that thing. And in Hebrews 13, chapter 14, he says that here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Um, and ultimately, well, I'll, I'll come back to this because this is sort of the application I want to get to, but... Um, this idea that we're not yet home, that we're just passing through, that in the meantime we're exiles. Peter links that a lot to the persecution and the suffering they're going to face. And certainly, we, all of us, face particularly difficult trials at various times. Hard things happen. I don't think a lot of us are facing real overt persecution in the way that Peter's audience probably was. Maybe we are. It depends on where you are in the world, and, and we may still yet face a lot more of that kind of persecution. But where this starts to apply more in my own life is just simply that life in general doesn't seem to be what I always hoped it would be, if that makes sense. Life is pretty good. I mean, the Lord has blessed me in a lot of ways. Um, I was reflecting this morning about all the incredible things that I have in my life. I mean, particularly the Lord just provided for me to be able to buy a house, for goodness sakes. Um, that's incredible. And yet I'm here as a missionary living in Romania. I don't sp hardly speak the language. Um, I barely speak the language of the city that I live in. I I live sort of perpetually in this feeling of, I'm a stranger, I don't belong here, I'm not really home. Um, in a way, which is a blessing, because it helps me uh, maybe understand this idea of being exiles here on the earth uh, a little bit more. However, I think I, I would say this would apply to anybody. I think I can safely say that nobody feels like life is all that they dreamed it would be. If this is all that we had... Um, then we better really make the most of it, right? And I think the testimony that you routinely get from people who, who have gotten all that sort of the world would define as success or pleasure um, is they're still unsatisfied. That's what Solomon seems to write in the book of Ecclesiastes, is that it was all vanity. I did all these things and what, what it didn't bring the kind of fulfillment, it didn't bring the kind of satisfaction. I feel like we're left here then sort of perpetually in this state of longing uh, for real life, real satisfaction, real fulfillment, a real home. Um, and 
what First Peter seems to be saying then is that that home is uh, in heaven. Um, in heaven, in the new heavens and new earth, when Christ returns to bring us back into our final inheritance. Um, and that applies to us then, and Jesus talks about this in the Sermon on the Mount, on Matthew chapter 6, 19 to 21, not to store up treasures here on earth where moth and rust destroy, but to store up treasures in heaven. Um, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, that we are to set our minds fully. Um, well, and this is what First Peter says, First Peter chapter 1, verse 13, to set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, that when Christ is revealed for the whole world, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to that when Christ returns and brings us home. Um, there's a lot more that could be said about that. A lot more I want to say, but I've already gone too long. Um, that as we live out our lives, we live by faith, looking forward to the reward, to the inheritance, and we find real joy in looking forward to that, um, knowing that we're just passing through these things here on earth. Yeah.